Hi, Trisha here. Um, I'm processing tomatoes today. Actually, I did some last night. And uh, I'll show you the finished product. This is what we're aiming for. Got a bag full of sauce. So this was reduced from the sauce that I'm doing. So I have all these tomatoes. And I have this really neat um, sauce mill, I guess you'd call it. Um, you don't have to core the tomatoes, peel the tomatoes, you just, <clears throat> it just pops out juice. So as I, I've got the hopper here full of cut tomatoes, and this is the brand that I'm using uh, of a food strainer. Yeah, so if that helps anybody to get the equipment. Um, but as you can see, what I'm just doing is cutting the tops off, putting them in the hopper, and yeah, quartering them, whatever, just to just to give it um, easier to go through. So, um, so what I have, this is uh, this machine needs a new ring in there, so it, it leaks a little bit. So basically, the sauce will come out here. The pulp skins and seeds and everything will come out this side and then this is just ca uh, catching drips so I just kind of press it down into the into the hopper there we go you can see on this side juice is starting to come out. And I'm using, um, I'm using all of our tomatoes. So there's a variety in here. There's some early tomatoes, zebra tomatoes, beefsteak tomatoes, and Roma tomatoes. Um, so, um, they're all contributing to this. Last year we had some great Paul Robeson tomatoes. They're kind of the brownish tomatoes. They're really fleshy. And, um, those were great to add beautiful color to the sauce. Uh, I started some seeds this spring, but it, um, yeah, I lost them in the the storm and the transition between the apartment and the house, uh, the trailer earlier in the spring. So as you can see, it's kind of, you can see the sauce that's coming out and, um, <clears throat> and the pulp. I'm almost finished this batch and what I usually do is I run the pulp through one more time and you'd be amazed at how much stuff comes out. Now I don't know if that's because some of it's still in the in the actual um, spinner or, or the juicer. juicer in there but it just gets the last bit out. So you can see the, the pulp come out and then that goes right into the compost bin. This leftover or catching drips goes in there and there's my hand. And then throw that into the saucepan. <clears throat> so I'm going to start <coughs> I had it on kind of medium heat 
and it just boiled away for oh probably two to three hours just to reduce the uh, tomato sauce and make it thicker and that's what we have here so now I'm ready to um, fill the hopper again and, and so basically what what you're doing is getting rid of excess water by by bubbling it or boiling it for a yeah, while. Yeah, it's reducing it. It's reducing and that, that takes out the water. So you just boil it for a while and it just gets thicker that way. I was just thinking there might not be, there may be some people out there who don't know what no, reducing No, what reducing is. is, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Concentrating if you're a chemist. Uh-huh, right. <laughs> but then you know what reducing is. But yeah. anyways. Yeah, so anyways, um, <clears throat> so I keep an eye on that. Um, don't let it burn and just let it, just let it boil up. Um, just let it simmer basically for hours and then as thick as you want it um, and uh, and I don't add any spices or anything to it because I'll do that when I'm cooking it up later so then it has many more uses um, <clears throat> and I throw them in the freezer so um, usually I do big bags like that because then I can make a big large um, pot of uh, spaghetti or sauce or chili or something like that and that's about the amount of tomato sauce that I would use for <clears throat> those things um, so it, it works out fine we actually used all of the the um, tomatoes I did last year so uh, so yeah it was worthwhile and I think this year <clears throat> we're gonna have even more tomatoes than last year so that's a good thing because we do go through our tomatoes and and right now we seem to be picking up probably uh, about one of these hampers every couple of days. Right. Um, so we're just starting into tomato season. Um, so <clears throat> through the rest of August into September until first frost, we'll be probably picking up tomatoes um, a couple of times a week, anyways, and uh, um, using some of them for fresh eating but uh, not all of them, and then the rest of them um, go into the freezer. Yeah. Maybe you should say a little bit about the way that we're, we've got our freezers organized because we haven't talked about that at all. <laughs> I don't know if it's very organized at this point. I have to go through it and organize yeah, them. Yeah, but just the way but, that we've got two freezers going at this yeah, point. Yeah, so we have a freezer. Well, um, let's just go. We just redid our pantry yesterday and uh, or got that in order. So we have a freezer here and we have obviously a freezer in our fridge. So that, I'd like to have more of the stuff that we're going to have use all the time. So I had, I had a lot of the vegetables in here, but the meat goes in here too. Um, the meat I usually put in the bottom of the fridge. <clears throat> the, um, um, the vegetables, bread, um, different, different things like that in here. And then downstairs I have more of the tomatoes, fruit, um, stuff that I, I use on occasion, like not every week or whatever. So that's how I'm doing doing our pantry. So that that freezer right now is in the laundry room, but it will go into the garage or the cold storage once our construction's done, and we can have access to the garage the, the way that we'd like. <clears throat> so I'm also trying to figure out a way to process all of our cucumbers. So you can see, got large cucumbers. So what I was asking is that these cucumbers, 
We've got so many of them. Um, I know you can freeze zucchini. I don't think you can freeze cucumbers, but I'd like to can them, but not pickle them. So if anybody has any um, ideas on how to do that, leave your comments below and I will look at them and see if, you know, I'm thinking that like a, a light vinegar and water and sugar solution, I think I've read about in canning jars. And then, um, yeah, so hopefully that will. And the next thing on my list is to deal with some of the cabbages and do some sauerkraut. So I will um, keep you up to date on how I do sauerkraut and that will be my first time. So again, a lot of this, some of it I've done before, but some of it's experiment. And if you can see right here, we've got a bunch of kale that we picked as well. <clears throat> Um, so I would like to um, freeze kale because you can do that and but I'd also try to like to make some kale powder um, so that we can add it to smoothies uh, uh, for yeah add it to smoothies and other things like that uh, soups and stuff that you don't want to have the, the the leaves and so on but you want to have the nutrition of the kale so anyways um, I'm going to continue with my tomato sauce as you can see it is boiling but not not overly so I'll just keep that going this morning and uh, we'll get we'll get the tomato sauce uh, train going so thanks for being with me this morning while I do this and we'll talk to you soon bye for now